Welcome to the Genesis weekly video. It's a Friday and it's a very special Friday because this is Genesis 31st birthday. So we have a special uh, video for you today. Uh, but um, uh, I would just like to turn the mic over to Wayne and say, Wayne, what do you, what, what are your thoughts on, uh, on our 31st birthday? Well, happy 31st birthday, Genesis. Uh, I guess my initial thoughts today are uh, one of being uh, thankful and proud. Just thankful that the whole team is together you know, during this pandemic. We're all working hard. We're all, we're all safe. We're all healthy. All our families are doing well. Uh, so thankful for that. And, uh, and just proud of how the teams come together and are executing during these hard times. We're all at home. We're out of the office. And we're, uh, we're doing, doing great. And we're, we're getting the job done for our clients. So we're very pleased. And uh, we're trying to commu communicate more and have more of a dialogue with our clients during these periods. And that's important and it's being appreciated. Uh, looking back at our 31 years, I just wanna thank a few, uh, few folks out there. Uh, first off, I'd like to start off by thanking our clients who've been with us from, many have been with us from day one and we've listened to them. They've helped us grow our business. They've given us ideas, they've made us better. And we're just uh, thankful for that and for them. I also want to thank uh, some of our past uh, partners, in particular, John Dustin, who helped founded the firm. He, he, helped, he helped get us off the ground. And uh, also uh, Dave Muller. Uh, we ended up merging with, uh, with his firm a while back and we got Mary Lou in that, that deal. She was, the, uh, she was the, uh, the special value there. And uh, I also want to thank J.P. Harrison, who helped us build the Fossil Free brand. Uh, he was a big part of that. We just want to thank him for that and being there. And of course, I also want to thank our, our clients, uh, as I mentioned, our also suppliers that have been here with us over the time, over the over the years. Uh, and you know, Ernst and Young and Allison Dutton, who's been a big part of our HR, and we, we really appreciate that. And Yulu's helped who's helped build our our fossil free brand. Uh, and uh, just you know, the whole the whole team in, in particular, the whole Genesis team is really uh, I just want to thank him for where we are and all the, all the past partners that have helped us grow and be who we are today. Well, thank you, Wayne. Uh, I too want to just add some thanks and I, oh, at the 25th birthday and the 30th birthday, I said the same thing and I, hopefully I'll come to lots of birthday parties and I can't imagine saying anything differently. Thank you to the staff, the people that make Genesis work. Um, but I have to say I reserve my most appreciation for the very imp imprudent clients who hired us in the first two years or so. Uh, this fledgling firm and they put their trust in us and now we deal with almost all their grandchildren and uh, I just have uh, endearing gratitude uh, for the trust you put in us and, and let us start the ball rolling. I'd also like to especially thank uh, client Carol Newell, who hired us in about 1992, a long time ago, and started us on the journey of fossil free, what back then called socially responsible investing. I think we owe a big gratitude to, to Carol. And as Wayne said, we listened to our clients and Carol would be one that played a big role there. Uh, I'd also like to thank our uh, outside board member, Eric Switzer. Uh, he's not on the call today, but he is very wise counsel and uh, we really appreciate that. Uh, uh. And finally, I would like to sincerely thank you cannot have a partnership for a business partnership for 31 years unless there's something there. There's uh, some intangible, there's some reason why the combination works. Um, you know, you don't always have to agree on everything, but you have to value each other. You have to value each other's skill set. And most importantly, you have to have the same uh, value system. So I think that's the reason Wayne and I have survived for uh, 31 years. And I would like to very much thank you, Wayne. Well, back at you, Leslie. Uh, we're like an old married couple. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we're whatever you know, going about things, but at the end of the day, we seem to come to a consensus in, a, in the same direction. Yes. As, and of course, we need the other people around us to do that. So I would like to uh, introduce to the clients some of the, not all the people at Genus, but there's about 35 people at Genus. Most of them are on this call. I'm going to ask uh, some of our executives and portfolio managers to um, say, uh, introduce themselves and say something. Let's start with uh, our famous first employee, Sue. 
Hi everyone, Sue Talbot, Partner and Portfolio Manager here at Genis. And as Leslie said, you may know me from my other title, Firm's First Employee. And uh, so that means I've been at Genis for 31 years and that truly is an incredible uh, number. Um, I also like saying that I started at Genis when I was 12, but after 31 years, I'm gonna change that and say I started at Genis when I was five. Um, <laughs> I just want to thank, you know, Wayne and Leslie for their mentorship, support and encouragement throughout the years. So uh, thank you for that. And I also want to thank our wonderful clients. It truly is a privilege working um, with you. And I look forward to the day when we can all meet again in person. So um, thank you, everybody. Stay safe and well. And um, happy birthday to Janice. Thanks. Thank you. So Virginia. Hi. Um, my name is Virginia Yu. I'm the director of IT. I'm responsible for managing our IT operations and financial data processing. My responsibilities also including, first, ensure company business continuity by managing internet operation, system functionalities, and firmware maintenance. Second, in charge of the development and the support of internal uh, investment and marketing applications as well as the third party technology to enable Genus to achieve business objectives. Third, oversee the generation of alpha files for monthly rebalance and company daily automation processes. I joined Genus in May 1997 and has been a partner since year 2000. Happy birthday, Genus. Thank you, Virginia. Virginia hasn't been busy at all through this uh, recent period we've been through. <laughs> Sarcasm. <laughs> Okay, Steve Ow. Hello, everybody. Um, I'm Stephen Ow. I'm the Chief Operating and Chief Compliance Officer at Genis. 2020 marks my 19th year at the firm. Uh, it's, uh, I'd like to say it's my first place I've joined, and I'm thankful for Wayne and Leslie for allowing me the opportunity to grow uh, with, it, with the firm and with everybody. Uh, super proud of our, all of our staff during this time and just want to say thanks to our clients for being there and see you soon. Sorry, dogs are barking. I had that on mute. Mary Lou Miles, come on down. Thanks, Leslie. Uh, yes, Mary Lou Miles. I am partner and director of wealth management here at Genis, and I've been here just over 15 years, so not quite as long as some of you. But I am so, um, what I love is working with all the people on you're going to see on the screen here today. But more importantly, I love all the relationships that Genesis has supported, like allows us as portfolio managers to have those conversations with clients and value those clients' successes. And um, so it's really great to have the opportunity to thank all of you for supporting us over these 31 years and also to um, say what a great team that we have working for you. And the fact that we're even doing this today is amazing to me. So I think really wish Janice a happy birthday and I am just thrilled to be here. Great. So Lisa. Oh, hi, uh, everyone. Uh, so this is Lisa Zhang. Uh, I'm the director of equity investments. Um, so um, I'm overseeing the day-to-day -day rebalance uh, and then portfolio constructions um, as well as the trading. Uh, apart from that, I'm also in charge of, uh, you know, um, any research related, um, including, you know, the data and then the uh, investment strategies, et cetera. Um, so I joined Janus since 2007, so uh, almost 13 years, also like a long journey. Um, really enjoyed, you know, working here with a group of people who are responsible and, um, you know, really passionate uh, at investment industry. Um, so, you know, we try hard and work so closely pursuing the best performance for our clients. And also we challenge ourselves from time to time uh, with, you know, in a late of ideas to, you know, make a better Janice. So all the best and uh, happy birthday, Janice. Great. Thank you, Lisa. Grant. Hi, I'm Grant Conroy, um, one of the portfolio managers at Genus. I've been here for three and a half years. Uh, very happy to be part of the 31st celebrations and hopefully here for many more years to come. Great. Um, Stephanie. Um, hi, this is Stephanie. Hello, everyone. Um, I'm a portfolio manager and a director of foundations and nonprofits. I got my first internship 
um, with Janice many, many, many years ago. And after that, I uh, spent some time doing graduate studies, uh, went to New York and Hong Kong. We joined Janice about three and a half years ago. Um, Janice is truly like a family to me. And um, I'm really grateful to be able to work with um, our clients and um, the Janice team. And special thanks to um, uh, Wayne and Leslie for your mentorship. And um, lastly, happy birthday to Janice. Thank you. So Mike, Mike. Hi, uh, so I'm Mike Thiessen. I'm the Director of Sustainable Investing and a partner at Janus. Uh, I work on our sustainable portfolios, uh, also free portfolios and impact portfolios. Uh, so it's been great working with clients and working with a team that, that really care about the difference that they're making in the world. Great, thank you, Mike. Ian. Hello, uh, this is Ian Lesher. I'm a partner and portfolio manager with Janus Capital Management. Uh, I've been here three years, uh, haven't regretted coming here. Uh, I love the people here, good people, great values, uh, really innovative crew that puts uh, clients first. And that's the most important thing. So happy 31st and uh, look for many more birthdays to come. Great, thank you, Ian. Uh, Martin. Hi, I'm Martin Wagren. I'm a uh, partner and portfolio manager with Genesis Capital Management. I been with the firm for about 18 months. Uh, in my more than two decades of uh, helping my clients reach their financial goals and making sure their uh, their families are looked after, I've always uh, striven to provide exceptional service to my clients. And I'm happy to say that uh, Genesis Capital Management is really a great firm to work with and, and for, and some of the, the people that I work with are, are great. Just wanted to say thanks to Leslie and Wayne for uh, for creating such an exciting 31 years ago. So thank you. Hi, thanks, Hi. Leslie. Uh, Tom, I'm an associate portfolio manager here at Genesis. Uh, I'm celebrating my 20th year in management, second year with Genesis. I came from RBC, and uh, one of the things that attracted me to Genesis was our uh, disciplined risk management and customized approach, um, and a big focus on uh, clients and staff. Uh, happy birthday, Genesis! Thank you, Thomas. Jill. Happy birthday, Genesis. Uh, my name is Jill Bester. I am over on Vancouver Island, servicing the Genesis clients um, remotely from my kitchen. Uh, uh, I would really like to uh, just give a, a shout out to uh, my colleagues and our customer service team uh, who are doing a fabulous job as we work from afar. Um, and again, gratitude to Wayne and Leslie for building such an incredible um, workplace and with an amazing team. So thank you very much. Great. Well, thanks everyone. That's a, that's a flavor of the, the people who work at Genesis. And um, I think maybe Wayne will go back to you now. Wayne, Michelle. Okay, yeah, just, uh, just again, a uh, big thanks to our clients and our past partners and all the team at, uh, at Genesis. We're all working hard and, and uh, through this pandemic, everybody's doing well, I believe. Everybody's healthy. And just uh, a big thanks to everybody and happy birthday, Genesis. So the first question was, is from a longtime client. It's a great question. It's a bit of a scary question. And he references, uh, you know, after World War I, Germany was slowing, had a slow and failing economy, massive unemployment, and uh, lots of uh, printing of money, creating hyperinflation. And uh, why, why is this time different? Why is this not what we're doing? So... Why are we not getting inflation? Yeah, well, won't, won't all this printing of money cause inflation? Well, it's not, you know, it's, it's always a fine line between inflation and, and deflation. And you're always kind of on knife's edge, I would say. And so I can paint all kinds of scenarios where uh, we can get inflation here in the future by all the printing of money. Uh, the big concern for me, frankly, is that, that the bond vigilantes of the 80s and 90s come back. If, and so, and if they come back and start pushing real, real yields out, 
they will really cause a problem for all debt holders. So that is, I think, an issue that we all should be concerned about. And uh, it is, you know, it's not a complete because they print a lot of money. There's, there's going to be uh, an inflation runaway. Now, gold is behaving that way, and we think gold is going to probably break out here in the near term. Uh, but longer term, the bond market can shut everything down and stop uh, inflation and, and, uh, and cause serious deflation. So that's a, that's a concern to us, and, and we're watching that. So it's, it's not a fait accompli. And I would say the bond market, the bond vigilantes, ultimately will be the regulator of inflation. Great. So basically, the, uh, the, the, the market, the world didn't have bond vigilantes in the 1930s. No, uh, they, in, in, many, in many markets, countries don't have bond vigilantes. We do. And, and by the, a bond vigilante, it's uh, investors who make interest rates go really high because they think they should be really high, even though the Fed doesn't put it there. Is that right? Right. right. So they, they cut off inflation before it gets going. Exactly. And that's the, that's a concern. That's a big threat. That was recognized. Even, even uh, President Obama was concerned about back that over the past, you know, when he was in power uh, as president, uh, that the bond real, real yields come back and, and cause a problem for us. Anyways, I suspect this question is going to come back again at some point. So we'll leave it there. And the really, uh, you know, that very good comments, Wayne. Uh, we're just going to have one more question just because we took up so much time having a birthday party. That's a bit another good question from a client in Kelowna. Uh, and it's, uh, you know, how can there be a surplus in oil, no place to store it and zero price. Uh, and what does that mean for Canada in particular, given our dependence on oil? Yeah, well, this week here, uh, we saw reality catch up to the Federal Reserve. The Federal Reserve has been really ahead of this whole ball game, lowering rates and trying to ease the problems. And with the drop in PMIs and the, and the crash in oil prices, uh, it really had an imp uh, you know, it came to, the chickens came home to roost, if we will. In reality, it met uh, the Fed's actions there. It's, I would say it's, it's not very good in terms of what happened. Uh, oil prices went down to zero. The futures went negative because they, there was no place to store the oil, obviously. But if you look out over the next one to four years, one year out, the futures oil are about $32. Uh, four years out, they're $40. This is bad news for, I would say, for Canada and oil producers. And what this means is there's going to be just, there's less consumption, obviously. The burn rate now is, has gone down during the pandemic, about 30 million barrels a day. I don't think it's going to ever come back to where it was before, because I think consumer ha habits have changed. There'll be less travel. People are zooming now more and doing those kinds of things. So I think consumption's down. And that's not good for oil reserves. Uh, Mark Carney, Bank of England, Bank of Canada, has been warning about stranded asset risk for many years. And this just raises the risk of stranded assets, of, of companies and countries that don't have the reserves. They won't be able to burn them. And so... And so as Canadians, you know, at Genesis, we've always been concerned about oil. For yes. the last 31 years, when we started yeah. Genesis, yeah. we have charged the Canadian dollar against the price of oil as saying Canada... Wealthy Canadians, get your money out of Canada. So this is an old theme for us. And to this day, we have a large weight outside of Canada. So that's in your portfolios. Yes, then that's reflecting our portfolio. We're underweight Canada as much as we can be right now. We're underweight oil. And we're staying with the winners in this, in this whole pandemic movement in terms of technology and, and uh, health care and consumer stables right now. And just to remind us all, we did start a U.S. global uh, bond fund in January because of the Canadian election and and uh, you know the, how Alberta is so out of step uh, with the rest of Canada. Uh, so uh, that's the two questions I have for you, Wayne. I just maybe want to remind people from what happened during the week. You know, we talk about the the big decline that took us from 3,300 to 2,300. Usually, that's a thousand points. This is the S and P 500 I'm talking about. And you get a 50% move back, that'd be 500 points. That takes you to 2,800. And it just seems to me that uh, market players with no roadmap of how we've ever stopped the economy and started again, they seem to be really not too happy getting away from whatever that 2,800 mark is on the S&P 500. Well, it's, it's, we're, we're, the volatility is dropping. We're happy about that. We want boring. We like boring. And I think what the market's trying to do right now is trying to focus on a bottom. The bottom in the pandemic and the bottom in the economic damage. It's looking for that kind of visibility. When it, when it finds that, I think it's starting to find that now, and maybe that can help us go further here. But still, there's big issues uh, coming out there from what we hear. There's you know, food shortage issues we're, we're hearing in some places right now. So those, those are dangerous and ominous, and there's geopolitical reasons to be concerned here as well. So 
uh, we're not out of the woods yet, but uh, the Federal Reserve and it, the governments are throwing tons of money at, at, at the problem right now. Right, so uh, this, as we've said from the beginning, will take time. This is just another week and we'll be back next Friday. We look forward to uh, talking to you then and uh, thanks for coming to our birthday party. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.